hemp wool and sheep wool are considered to be the greenest or most sustainable insulation materials. In this video, we're going to look at how they're made, their main differences, as well as their pros and cons. Hempitecture and Havelock sent me these samples for an unpaid, unbiased review. Let's first look at hemp wool. I'm sure some of you are wondering if this product can get you high. Really, really high? It can't. Industrial hemp is made of a cannabis plant that contains less than 0.3% THC or tetrahydrocannabinol, which is the psychoactive component. Hemp is an extremely useful plant that can be used in a variety of products. The seeds are used to make oil, paints, animal feed, soap, and lotions. The leaves and flowers are used to make CBD medicines. The roots have medicinal value and are used to treat inflammation, stomach issues, migraines, etc. But we are going to focus on the stalk, which is composed of two layers. The inner layer is called herd or shiv and is used to make hemp blocks, hempcrete and paper. The outer layer is called bast fiber, which has been used for centuries to make ropes, clothing, canvas, sails and now hemp wool insulation bats. These long and strong fibers are separated from the bark and then combed to remove any wooden herd particles and pull the fibers apart. Machines compress these fibers to form bat insulation products. This hemp wool made by Hempitecture is made of 92% industrial hemp fiber and 8% textile polyester binder. You can find small pieces of hemp herd or shiv, but it's mainly just thick, resilient plant fiber. Hemp wool is only found in bats and rolls, not loose fill, because of the nature of the fibers. They are tough and intertwined, they cannot be separated easily. Now let's look at how sheep wool insulation is made. After the sheep are sheared, the wool is sorted based on color. White wool is typically more expensive than gray or black wool because it can be dyed different colors. Bales of wool are then washed in warm water to remove all traces of dirt, vegetable matter and grease. After the wool dries, it is combed so all the fibers are running in the same direction. This makes an extremely thin layer of insulation which is carried on a conveyor belt to a pendulum. The pendulum swings back and forth to make multiple wool layers. The layers are bonded with a mechanically driven needle punch which stitches them together. Havelock sources all their wool from New Zealand primarily because of the Animal Welfare Act which governs how animals are treated. Sheep outnumber humans 6 to 1 in New Zealand. They better be treated well to prevent an uprising. Havelock produces both blown-in or loose-fill insulation and bat insulation. Bat insulation is easier to install, but it can slump over time unlike loose-fill or blown-in insulation. They also do not use any chemicals like formaldehyde, glue or any other bonding agents in their products. It's 100% pure wool. Hemp wool is sold by the pallet in various depths and widths. A 2-inch deep bat has an R value of 7, while a 7.5 inch deep bat is R28. The R value of sheep wool is exactly the same as hemp wool. A 2 inch deep bat is R7 and a 5.5 inch bat is R20. They do not sell anything thicker than 5.5 inches. The 5.5 inch bats will fit in a standard 2x6 stud bay for an exterior wall. 5.5 inch thick hemp wool costs $1.95 per square foot, while the same sheep wool costs $2.25 per square foot. They are surprisingly similar in price. Just like most insulating products, hemp and sheep wool operate on the insulating property of trapped air between the fibers. As you can tell, hemp is much stiffer, denser and heavier. It can hold more trapped air, it is tightly woven and it doesn't disintegrate. It also has greater dimensional stability. It bounces back to its original shape after being compressed. It is less likely to slump and flatten, so it has a lower thermal drift which is the loss of R value over time. Sheep wool, on the other hand, is very floppy, malleable, soft and lightweight. It must be handled with care since it can be easily pulled apart. Its dimensional stability is inferior to hemp wool. It doesn't bounce back to its original shape as easily after being compressed. We can assume that it's more likely to slump over time, so its thermal drift is higher than that of hemp wool. But the unique thing about wool is that you're not only relying on trapped air for insulation, but the fibers themselves are good insulators. Each fiber is composed of protein molecules or keratin, organized into five follicles. These trap air, moisture and harmful chemicals. 
That's why wool jackets, sweaters, blankets and thermal socks are so popular. Sheep wool is also being marketed as the go-to product for van conversions. There's a common misunderstanding of how any type of wool insulation works, whether it's fiberglass, denim or sheep wool. People think that they need to stuff as much insulation as possible into a cavity when that actually lowers the R value of the material. You need to fluff it up to trap more air inside. I'm not saying that sheep insulation isn't ideal for vans. Considering that you're in such a tight space, you'd want a non-toxic insulating material that doesn't off-gas, like this pure wool insulation. Related to their stiffness is the ability to wrap around pipes, wires and outlets and stud bays. Hemp wool has very little flex, so you need to carve out material to fit it snugly over PEX pipes. This could be a problem if pipes are located at the center of a stud. Sheep wool can be easily separated and tucked in on either side of wires and pipes. Hemp wool friction fits into stud bays on walls and ceilings without additional fasteners. Sheep wool has to be stapled to walls and fastened with a wire mesh or cables to the ceiling. Hemp wool is very tough and cannot be easily cut with an X-Acto knife. You have to use a table saw or a miter saw to get a clean cut. Be sure to clean your blade and the vacuum after. I notice a lot of stray hemp fibers that could clog up the saw. Sheep wool fibers are also surprisingly strong. They can't be cut with an X-Acto or a bread knife. You need to use a pair of sharp scissors or a proper insulation cutter. Noise Reduction Coefficient or NRC is a rating of how much sound a material absorbs. I couldn't find the NRC rating for hemp wool, but I found a study that claimed that it's similar to fiberglass. Havelock's sheep wool insulation has an NRC rating of 0.9, which means that it absorbs 90% of sound. Now for the water repellency test. Hemp absorbed some of the water and allowed it to pass through to the other side. It changed color when wet but it also dried up fairly quickly. It did not lose shape or disintegrate. Hemp wool is vapor permeable with a rating of 0.647 perms. If you haven't watched my video on vapor perm ratings yet, I'll link it up here. Hemp is also hygroscopic which means that it absorbs moisture from the air and controls the relative humidity levels inside your home. It also naturally repels mold and mildew. Sheep wool is very similar to hemp in this aspect. When I poured water over the sample, it did absorb it but it did not disintegrate. Sheep wool can naturally absorb moisture while staying dry and retaining its high insulative properties. It is also hygroscopic. When the ambient air dries, sheep wool will release moisture into the air. Mold and mildew will not grow on sheep wool. After doing all these tests, I was really impressed with both materials, but I was leaning towards hemp wool mainly because of its dimensional stability. And then I did the fire test. Hemp wool is supposed to be a class A fire retardant, but it caught on fire very easily and released a lot of acrid smoke and fumes. Even after pouring water over it, the fibers were still smoldering. I tried to stomp it out, but the winds fanned the burning embers and it continued to smoke. I had to dunk it in my pool to stop it smoking. It was very concerning and disappointing. This is an untreated hemp and polyester composite. They might need to treat it with ammonium sulfate and borate, which are fire and flame retardants. Don't mistake this product for hempcrete, which is mixed with lime and sand and is a fire retardant. On the other hand, sheep will perform pretty well when lit. The flame didn't spread, even though it turned black and singed. It did smell a little funny though, like when you burn your hair with a curling iron. Finally, let's discuss their biggest advantage over other types of insulation. They are very environmentally friendly. 
The hemp plant requires very little water to grow and process, about a quarter of the water needed for cotton. You can also double the fiber yield per hectare compared to cotton. It has a quick turnaround of as little as 70 days from plant to harvest. It doesn't require any insecticides or pesticides. Hemp oil contains no VOCs or volatile organic compounds. It can be handled without gloves or a mask or eye protection. At the end of its life, hemp oil insulation can be recycled or ground up since it's an organic material. Sheep wool insulation is also very eco-friendly. Embodied energy is the energy required to produce this material and manufacture it to a building-grade insulation standard. Havelock claims that wool insulation contains the least embodied energy of any insulation available, half that of cellulose and one-sixth that of mineral wool. At the end of its life, this nutrient-rich fiber can be used as fertilizer or compost instead of heading to a landfill. There is one aspect of sheep wool insulation that confuses me. It's marketed as a product that absorbs VOCs, formaldehyde, sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxides, etc. But if you are sealing it with drywall, mud and paint, how will it purify the air? I personally lean towards hemp wool because I'm fascinated with how versatile and valuable the plant is and how it's finally making a comeback after years of suppression. Sheep wool seems to be great for niche projects like van conversions and tiny homes. They are both excellent eco-friendly alternatives to traditional insulation, but they need to be refined. For example, it would be great to see a fire retardant, continuous exterior insulation hemp product. Sheep wool needs to have greater dimensional stability. It is constantly shedding and it gets everywhere, which is frustrating. Also, as more companies enter this sector, the cost will probably come down to rival that of traditional insulation. Hope you enjoyed this hemp versus sheep wool insulation comparison. I'm going to make other insulation videos on denim, cellulose and spray foam insulation too. If you have any questions about these products or you're interested in other insulation materials, leave me a comment below. I'll also link my Patreon page if you can support me, I'd really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.